Welcome to Let's Get to the Marks. Okay, I'm going to go through an essay today for Paper 3 Biology for AQA Biology A Level. And these are all essay titles that have come up in the last 15 years. But the one I'm going to look at today on this walkthrough is um, write an essay on the importance of responses to changes in the internal and external environment of an organism. So let's get into it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let's go. Write an essay on the importance of responses to changes in the internal and external environment of an organism. The reason I like essay titles like this is because it's got two parts. So it gives you a bit of structure when planning it. It's got the and bit in the middle, internal and external. So you already know, right, I'm going to talk about this, then I'm going to talk about that. You should spend at least two minutes planning your essay. And that way, if you can't think of five topics, which you need to come up with, five different specification topics, if you can't think of them, you can go, okay, I've only spent two minutes and you still got plenty of time to choose the alternative essay title in your exam. So I would always spend at least two minutes planning it out, making sure you can think of at least five topics. So make sure your goal is to write a good essay. You need to do a plan before you take action. And that's very, very important. So let's have a look at how you would plan out an essay like this. For each of the five topics you can think of, you're going to need to cover AO1 and AO2. And to break that down, AO1 is basically your scientific content, your knowledge, your key terminology that you've learned off by heart for paper one and two. Okay. AO2 is the application, how it applies this content. And the reminder in essay titles of this is the word importance. Every essay title has the word importance. So we need to talk about the internal and external um, the responses to changes in the internal and external environment, but then we need to say why that's important. So let's take this essay question, which is different. Why is the cell membrane important? So our AO1 would be just talking a bit about that scientific terminology you've learned and a bit of explanation about how the cell membrane works. So you'd want to talk about the nonpolar tails only allow, it's a phospholipid bilayer, the nonpolar tails only allow nonpolar molecules or small molecules through, and that the um, nonpolar part does not allow in polar molecules like glucose and amino acids. And just to explain the importance of that, the AO2 would be to say, well, if glucose could all rush in, it could lower the water potential of the cell if it came in uncontrolled and just simply diffused in, and that could cause the cell to swell or shrink, etc. So that's your importance of after you've done your scientific bit. So let's get on with this essay and look at the plan. We've got internal changes. So I'm going to look at the control of blood glucose, which is something we do internally, part of homeostasis, and also osmoregulation. And what you should note is that both osmoregulation and control of blood glucose are in a very similar topic. They're part of homeostasis, which is topic six. But notice there's part of a separate subtopic. Osmoregulation is 6.4.3 and control of blood glucose is 6.42. So we're okay to do that. And that counts as two separate topics. Now, I'm moving on to external changes and how we respond to them. So I'm going to look at receptors and how we respond to external stimuli like pressure or light and phototropism. So we're going to go on to look at plants and how plants respond to sunlight in this effect. You could do geotropism or another type of tropism, or you could look at kinesis or taxis. There's actually loads and loads of topics on this. Now, you might say, hey, Tom, you've only come up with four topics, but I'm saving my fifth topic for the beyond the specification topic. That little bit extra that you're going to need is going to be my fifth topic. Here is a list of other topics the exam board said were okay for this particular essay. And you can look at all of these. These are all ones where you can talk about internal or and external responses or responses to internal and external changes, i.e. stimuli. Cool. Okay, waffling a bit now. Make sure if you find this useful, you leave a comment. If you found certain things about this video not very useful, please leave a comment because then I can make them better. I'm going to try and do um, a video for each of the thir the last 30 essays that have come out. So I'm going to go through and try and make a video on each essay for the last 30 AQA essay titles. So that's going back like 10 or 15 years. All right, let's move on. 
Now here's my introduction to the SA. Just homeostasis involves control systems that can keep the internal environment constant. This is important when responding to internal environmental changes. All cells require energy and so blood glucose concentration must be carefully controlled. Da -da, go into my first topic. Do you get marks for an introduction? No. Not unless it contains some useful A-level content relevant to the essay title, but sometimes it just makes it easier to flow into an essay if you do an introduction. So here's my point scoring AO1 marks on blood glucose control. After a meal containing carbohydrate, blood glucose concentration rises. The pancreas responds by secreting the hormone insulin from clusters of beta cells found in the islets of Langerhans. Notice those words in bold. Those are the ones which are going to score me marks. Insulin is an effector. It is a protein hormone with a specific tertiary structure that gives it a unique 3D shape. So it combines to specific receptors on the cell membrane of muscle and liver cells. It increases the number of GLUT4 channel proteins. You could just say channel proteins here and you'd get the marks in the cell membrane, increasing permeability to glucose. Glucose can now move into the cell by facilitated diffusion. So what you're really doing in the essay with this kind of stuff, it's like at the end of paper one, those five mark questions. You're scoring points by showing off your content knowledge. The insulin also activates glycogenesis, which is a process that converts glucose into glycogen. And this is all my AO1 content I probably need. If I want, I can inc there are extra content I can talk about this. But bear in mind, we've only got 40 minutes really to construct this whole answer. So now I'm going on to my application. Like, why is this important? Like, if we didn't control the glucose, what would happen? Well, you could suffer from diabetes mellitus or mellitus, a condition where the blood glucose concentration isn't controlled after. And this can be, you can get hyperglycemia. Again, the words in bold here are key. Um, also, the nephrons in the kidneys can't remove all the glucose from the filtrate by selective reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule. So you're going to end up excreting more glucose if your blood glucose is high. Um, why is that bad if you excrete blood glucose? Well, it's a respiratory substrate in glycolysis and you're going to end up with less ATP. And then you could go into all the things that we need ATP for, phosphorylation of molecules um, for energy, for muscle contraction, to break the cross bridges, the actin myosin cross bridges. There's loads of stuff you can go on, but you don't need to write pages and pages. So it's just a paragraph on AO1, followed by a paragraph on AO2 explaining why that's important. Now, when AQA started the latest spec, way back in what was it 2015 when they wrote this spec the first exams were 2017 but they the advice they gave out was that you should link the topics now they've kind of um wound back on that they're saying you don't really need to link the topics but you might still want to so you could link the topic another internal environmental change or stimuli is the water potential of the blood so if the water potential of the blood increases osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus this is your ao1 will detect the change. They do this because water moves out of them by osmosis from a high to low water potential. This causes the cells to decrease in volume. Thus, they stimulate other cells in the hypothalamus to send an impulse or action potential to the posterior pituitary gland, which acts as an effector. So GCSE would be saying pituitary gland. Remember, this is A-level content, so it's the posterior pituitary gland. This releases antidiuretic hormone. I don't suggest you abbreviate it to ADH. I think you've got to use the real name at least once in the answer. Um, of course, we can then talk about how it goes to the collecting ducts, makes them more permeable. If you know about aquaporins, which is a little bit beyond the spec, you won't get the points for beyond the spec. It's too, too little information. But you can say the aquaporins move into the membrane and increase the permeability. More water is reabsorbed um, into the medulla from the filtrate and then into the blood by osmosis. However, what is the importance? That's all the AO1. So what's the AO2? Well, regulating water is important. Otherwise, we become dehydrated. We can talk about water being needed for cooling, sweating, evaporation. Why is that important? Well, otherwise, our enzymes would denature. We get too hot and our enzymes are denature. Pick and name an enzyme. Show off your knowledge. ATP synthase in the Criste, its 3D structure would change. Maybe it wouldn't be added. Um, catalyze the reaction between ADP and PI. So we get less ATP formed during chemiosmosis in oxidative phosphorylation. So again, you're showing off your knowledge, even though it's AO2, you're applying why it's important. Why is water important? We can also talk about water being needed for hydrolysis. You know, all those reactions where we're breaking big polymers like glycogen to glucose. Um, 
and those kind of things. So we need um, hydrolysis to do that. We need to do hydrolysis reactions. Okay. So we've looked at how organisms can respond to internal changes. Now we're going to look at the response to external changes. So I've covered two topics already. We're now going into our third. So imagine your arm touched a sharp nail, a rose, whatever, bloody, bloody, blah, blah, blah um, external stimuli. How would the organism respond? Well, in humans, we've got Pacinian corpuscles, which are mechanoreceptors. Again, this is AO1, points, points, points. In the skin, these would detect the stimuli. The Pacinian corpuscle contains layers of lamellae, more points, that deform, more points. This causes stretch-mediated sodium ion channels to open, sodium ions to diffuse in. You get that big influx of sodium ions that creates a generator potential. Now, that doesn't mean we get an action potential if there's enough sodium ions to cross the threshold and change the membrane potential enough that it goes past like minus 55 or minus 50 millivolts, then an action potential will be formed. This will travel down the sensory neuron. And then I could talk about if I wanted, you could go into as much depth as you want, saltatory conduction. We could get to the synapse. We could get to the neuromuscular junction, the depolarization, depolarization of the sarcolemma. I mean, you have to wind back some of it. You can't just go into so much detail. But essentially, this re results in the response where the muscle contracts and we pull our hand away. And that is your AO1. So you've got a chance to really show off how the Pacinian corpuscle works and then how an action potential is formed. If you've got enough time, you can go into real detail about um, the neuromuscular junction. You could explain muscle contraction in detail. And that's all your AO1 content for this topic. You're going to score lots of points there. You then need to say, well, why is it relevant? What would happen if you didn't move your hand away, if you couldn't respond to danger? And then you've got to think of the application of that. So, for instance, you could talk about blood loss. Um, if you got a cut, for instance, you didn't remove your hand away from a sharp object, you could damage your skin. Uh, you, could get a, you could suffer from blood loss. And then you could go on to say, right, that means less oxygen delivered to cells. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in oxidative phosphorylation. Without it, we can't complete aerobic respiration. We wouldn't be able to make ATP. And then on to all the problems with not having ATP, i.e. we can't do the power stroke or break actin myosin cross bridges when we're trying to do muscle contraction. So there's loads and loads and loads of um, ways you can talk about this and then you just have to think of why each paragraph is important and like I say I like to do four topics and then one beyond the specification if you don't feel like you've got one beyond the specification then just do five topics but you will limit your maximum marks so here I'm now looking at plants I've got a little link here but do we really need a link we don't so it's it's not a, a really clever link but I'm just saying we've looked at animals now we're going to look at plants and how they respond to their environment. So if sunlight is coming from a particular direction, that's a directional stimulus, A level mark. Uh, plants have a positive phototropic response. Um, indolacetic acid, another mark, and auxin produced in the tip and shoot is, uh, the tip of the shoot, sorry, is a growth hormone. It moves via diffusion and active transport over short distances and by mass flow over long distances. IAA which is, I can now use the abbreviated version because I've used the full name once. IAA concentration increases in the shaded areas of the plant. IAA is a growth factor. It causes the cell walls of the plant to become loose and stretchy, which is elongated, more key words. This uneven distribution of the growth hormone causes greater elongation in the shaded region. These cells are the effector. This causes the shoot to bend towards the sunlight, which is the response. So, um, why is that important? Why is it important for plants to bend towards the sunlight? And this is where I'm saying, well, it's important because you get more sunlight in photosystem two in the thylakoid membranes, which means more photoionization of chlorophyll, more electrons get excited and released and enter the electron transport chain. And that's going to mean you're going to form more ATP and get more reduced NADP. So we get more hydrogen, electrons, and energy transferred to the light-independent reaction or Calvin cycle in the stroma, and therefore we get more glycerate-3-phosphate or GP, which is converted to TP, triose phosphate. And then the plant can make more glucose, lipid, starch, cellulose, whatever it wants to make, organic substances. So your AO2 is the explanation of why the first one is important, but you also in that get to show off some of your A-level knowledge as well, even though it is really stating why it's important you still get to show your A-level knowledge. So now we're going to go for beyond the specification. 
So this one's a bit of far out there. And you might think, well, where'd you get this beyond the specification stuff? I always think just pick yourself up a CGP for OCR or for a different exam board and find something that's not in the exam board. And the other point is, do you, for the beyond the specification, those last five marks or the top marks to get the top marks, do you have to have 30 different beyond the specification paragraphs in the bag memorized for your essay? No, you can have four or five memorized off by heart just paragraphs of beyond the spec, and you should be able to apply those four or five to 30 or 40 different essay titles just by adapting that little bit. So here I'm going to talk about um, the hypothalamus releases hormones which stimulate not the posterior but the anterior pituitary gland. This then releases tropic hormones that stimulate a variety of endocrine glands. An example is during fight and flight response, corticotrophin releasing hormone known as CRH is secreted from the hypothalamus and stimulates the, um, and causes the release of ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. This travels through the blood, stimulates the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex releases gluten glucocorticoids like cortisol, this affects the metabolism causing more glycogenolysis and some gluconeogenesis, which is where you make um, glucose from substances like lipids or protein. So uh, to prevent the breakdown of all the glycogen stores, the cortisol also acts in a negative feedback loop, inhibiting further release of, further release of CRH and the hypothalamus from the hypothalamus. So there's a load of information there that will score us marks for beyond the specification. Again, we can talk about why this is important in the fight or flight response. So this would then be our AO2. And we would say, well, look, once again, this is really important because this makes more glucose available for glycolysis, um, for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration, which means more ATP. More ATP is more muscle contraction, iron transport, nerve impulse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, guys, leave a comment in the comments uh, with any suggestions how I can improve these videos. I'm going to do about 30 of these. Let's get to the marks. You're still here? It's over.